the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 29. Let's hear the word of God. Our Lord Jesus said, Whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, I will liken him unto a foolish man who also built his house on the sun. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was it fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at this teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Hallelujah. Amen. After Jesus had done speaking, the people, the audience said, he taught with authority. He doesn't teach like other preachers, like the scribes. The teachers of the law, he teaches differently. Jesus likened two people. They all heard the words of God, but one went his way and didn't build his life upon the word of God. The other heard it and built upon it. What does it mean building upon the word of God? The scripture interprets itself. So I will not do any interpretation. I will let us look at what the word of God says. What it means by building your life upon the word of God. And if you are not building upon, you are not building upon the same condition. Everybody say the same condition. The same condition. The same free condition that faced the person who built on the rock face the person who build on the sun. Are you building your life upon the sun? He said, first of all, he said, the rains descended and the floods came. The rains, torrential rains fell and turned the little trickle waters into a flood state. And the flood also hit this building. And the wind blew upon the same houses. Two houses. One stood the test of time. The other one fell. But whoever hears these words of mine and do them the other one didn't do them. The Lord Jesus insisted on hearing the word of God, but above all, obeying it is building upon. Beloved, it is very imperative, very important that we pay attention to the words of Jesus. What are you building your life upon? Are you building your life upon prophetic words from a prophet? Yes, I know the scripture says, believe the prophet and you shall prosper. And believe the word of God and you shall be established. Look at the contrast. One will give you wealth, material things. The other one 
establishes you, builds you. Once will give you one will give you the course of life, but one builds you up. What are you building with your life upon? Those of you who are fascinated by prophetic ministries, you don't build your life around prophecy. I'm telling you, you don't. If you build your life around prophecy, you will fail. Torrential rains will come. It will accumulate flood. The wind will blow. You will crash. Hallelujah. Amen. Whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, the Lord Jesus pointed out to the importance of our not just hearing, but doing the things he has commanded us. How many of the scriptures, if I may ask this afternoon, how many biblical scriptures are you building your life upon? Or have you built your life upon already? How many of them? How many scriptures? Have you memorized that you live by that you are conscious of that comes to your forehead anytime there is a circumstances that you can draw from please pay attention to what i'm saying let me give you a little analysis if you see a cork a floater a floater can be tied into a substance that sinks and you drop it in the ocean or the sea or the water. And the floater will cause that sinking object not to float. Because something is holding it from upstairs. A floater. If we build our lives upon the word of God, it will cause us to float. Hallelujah. But if you build your life upon something else, you will sink. We will come to that. We will see Peter and Jesus when the storms was possible and Peter asked the Lord can I come to you the word of God will make you float towards God towards the service but when you take the word of God out of your life you will sink deep down there hallelujah Amen. the book of Revelation chapter 1 the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 says Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy. This prophecy they are talking about is not the prophecy that prophet has been giving you. This words of prophecy is the scriptures. Blessed is he that reads and they that hears. Whenever the word of God is talking about hearing, it's not just talking about listening and go. By hearing and obeying, obeying it. The word of God says, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. Hear, O Israel. Shama. Shama. Hear. Don't just hear, but listen and do it. Shama Israel. Hear, listen, and put into practice. Hallelujah. So the Revelation 1.3, the Lord says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of the prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. And keeps, keeps means they put it into practice. They don't just hear and store it somewhere in their memory and that's it. There are benefits, great benefits of building our lives upon the word of God. James, the half-brother of Jesus, will tell us that we should be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving ourselves. If we hear the word of God and we don't put it into practice, James said, we deceive ourselves. What is the problem? Why are many of us Christians not building upon the word of God. Why are we not building our lives upon the word of God? Listen to the book of Ezekiel. Look at what it says in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33 from verse 30 says, And also you son of man, the children of your people are still talking against you 
by the walls, in the doors of the houses. And they speak one to another, everyone to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what the word that comes from the Lord. These people said about Ezekiel, Come, let us go and hear what Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, is saying. So they heard all right. They've been going to listening to him. They've been going to church and listening to the preacher. Beloved, has church become routine to you? You don't absent yourself from church. But is that all that church means to you? King David said, seek the Lord with his strength. Seek him evermore. How come David knew God more than his co-equals when he went to the same synagogue with them? When they were all done together, David said, I decided to seek the Lord and his strength. Friday when we were praying, the Lord took me all the way from my, to my childhood. And in the flash, was showing me the places I've walked and prayed. And some Christian brothers have prayed together with. Some still alive, some have gone to be with the Lord. And God was showing me how I used to sit at Cocoa Beach on the rocks and would take my Bible and would read from Genesis. And I would look at the mighty Guinea and see and Gulf of Guinea before me. And then I would be saying to the Lord, I know your word says that you created all things. This mighty sea. And the fishes therein that I cannot see, the mighty one. But Father, beyond this sea, beyond this sea, there are nations over there that I must preach over there. Then I will tell from Cocoa Beach where I see there is a little bit hill over there. Sometimes when I stand on that hill, I can see the brie hills. I can see the, the brie hills where the hills almost kiss the skies. And I will say to the Lord, beyond those hills there are nations over there that i must preach over there then sometimes when i sit there and i see the airplane fly over me because when the airplanes take off from accra international kotoka airport they go into the sea and turn before they take their course so normally they pass through my town especially by the beach and i will look up up there and i say father this aeroplane is taking these people to a nation far beyond my widest expectation. But someday, somehow, I want to preach in one of those nations. Oh, what a beautiful time. That the Lord has granted my wish, has placed me over here, and I must fulfill my words to preach in, in this nation he has brought me far away from the shores of Cocoa Beach. Hallelujah. Amen. The people said of Ezekiel, come, let's go and listen to him. Brother, coming to listen to me alone is not enough. Going to church and listening to your favorite pastor is not enough. Admiring your pastor, talking about your pastor to other people. Oh, have you heard so and so preacher? Oh, have you heard this man of God? Have you heard this man of God? How God was using him? That alone is not enough. What do you do with what you hear the man of God preach? Verse 31, in Ezekiel 33. They said, and they come unto him as the people come in. And they sit before Ezekiel as my people. The Lord was talking to Ezekiel. And, he, and they hear your words. But they will not do them. For with their mouth, they show much love. But their hearts cough. Their heart goes after their own covetousness. After they have left church service. After they have left you. Their heart chases after things that moves them the most. What moves you the most? After you have given gods to gods and Caesars to Caesar, what is? Sunday we go and give gods to God. Then Monday to Saturday, it is Caesar's time. What have you got from Caesar that you have to give to him? So God was telling the preacher, he said, these people, they talk about you in their houses, 
They talk about you when you are not there. They talk among themselves about you, your messages. They come and they listen to you. But they don't obey it. They don't build their lives upon the word of God. Verse 32. And lo, you are unto them as a very lovely song. You are to them a lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice. And can play well on instrument. What a coincidence that I play on instrument too. Hallelujah. They said Ezekiel, you are to them someone who plays. Maybe Ezekiel plays musical instrument. We never knew. Maybe he plays harps. Maybe he sings before he preaches like I do. For they hear your words, but they don't do them. Verse 73. And when this comes to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. God is saying, keep on talking to them. Keep on telling them what I give you. But it will all come to pass. And then they will realize that after all, you were a prophet. A prophet they didn't listen to. A prophet they didn't obey his word. They did not build their life upon the word of God. What is God saying about it? This is what God was saying about the people who goes to listen to the prophet Ezekiel. My brother, my sister out there, what is God saying about you in your relationship with the word of God and the preachings you've been hearing? What is God saying about you? Is he saying the same thing about the children of Israel to you? Look at Matthew 24, 35. Matthew 25, 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Beloved, heaven and earth, everything you see in this life, the mansions, the money, the pomp, the beautiful car, if you, if you have your private hospital, uh, hello, pray, whatever you hold, it will pass away. You, you, you will pass away. By the word of God, will never pass away. This is why it is important that we build our lives with the word of God because when everything is gone the word of God remains and you know why because God said his words doesn't go and come to him void empty it goes to accomplish the purpose for which he was sent now listen to me if the word of God doesn't go and come void but it returns to God if you build your life upon the word of God if the word of God becomes part of your life then when your soul walks out of your body and the word of God is part of your soul, you know what will happen? The word of God is going to take you all the way to God because your soul and the word of God is inseparable. So the word of God will take you with it to where God is. But if the word of God is not part of your life, when your soul detached from your body, it will send you down. It's the difference between those who goes to God and those who don't go to God. As long as the word of God is part of your life, it will take you to God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When our life is spent in this life, Jesus, remember what Jesus said, Matthew 4.4 4, and Deuteronomy 4.4, 4, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So if we have eaten the word of God, you know every food you eat becomes part of your body. I'm sure if they take you to a lab and they chop off your flesh a little bit and they have the chemicals to separate your body, that flesh they took, they will see a little bit of cacao in there. They will see a little bit of the tilapia you ate over there. They will see a little bit of pangu you put over there. Because your body is Due to what you have eaten, the things you have eaten, they have formed part of your life. They have been transformed. That's why when you eat carbohydrate, your body doesn't absorb the carbohydrate. It digests it into glucose and takes it and replenishes your body and you begin to grow. So we are full of the things we have eaten. Hallelujah. Amen. So if the word of God has been part of our life, it will form part of our souls. And then, when our life is over, the word of God cannot be separated from our life. And since the word of God comes from God and goes to God, 
It is the word of God that will take us all the way to God. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 6. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 6. When he has stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Say, at your word. At your word. You know this, you know this scripture already. You ask me, how does that fit into the topic we are looking at? How are you building your life? Peter said, I would have resisted doing the same thing again. But because I knew the, your words and I knew the end part of your word, I am going to do it one more time. And when they had let down the word of God, they caught great number of fish and their nets were breaking. When he obeyed the word of God, this is Simon Peter and the colleagues. When they obeyed the word of God, they saw a different outcome. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, if we build our life around the word of God, we will see a different outcome. Hallelujah. Amen. You will surely see a different outcome. Look at the same Peter. Look at the same Peter in Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 to 30. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Because the other day, the verse we just read, when you obey the word of God, they caught fish. So when the storm was threatening their lives, and Jesus said, I am he, he said, if you are he, speak again. Because your words has life. And if I could build upon your word, something miraculous will happen. Hallelujah. Again. So the Lord said, I give you my word. Come. And based on the word of God, Peter began to walk on the surface of God. The word of God will cause you to do the impossible. Hallelujah. Amen. I said the word of God will cause you to walk on surface that will otherwise make you to sink. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God caused Peter to walk on water, float on water. But when he took his eyes off the word of God, he began to sink. This is a big lesson. As long as we are walking on the word of God, we will float upon anything. Hallelujah. Amen. But when we take our, word, our eyes off the word of God, we will crash. Hallelujah. Amen. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried unto the Lord, Lord, save me. Oh, beloved, are you sinking? You took your eyes off the word of God. You begin to live outside the word of God. You begin to find husband outside the word of God. You got that husband outside the word of God. You got that wife outside the word of God. You compromise to get that job outside the word of God. And now you are sinking. You are in that marriage, but you are sinking. You are in that business you are sinking you are you are sinking because you compromise the word of god but don't worry call upon him again hallelujah Amen. he will lift you up just as he did peter beloved we are talking to you on the topic what are you building your life upon we're looking at peter peter's experience how he built his confidence upon the lord and everything was right any time any one of you take our eyes off, beloved, we will sing. We have read from Ezekiel. Now, I want us to look at, again, look at Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 2, verse 13. He said, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the Lord shall be justified. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only the hearers, when we hear, it is not enough. When we hear, what do we do with what we hear? 
Look at what Moses said. Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 1 said, Hear, Shema, Shema Israel, the statutes and the judgment which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep them and do them. Keeping them and doing them means you are building your life upon the word of God. Remember, the rains will come. The hardship of life. The floods. The wind will blow. Life challenges. They will come whether you like, you like it or not. And they will beat vehemently on you. They will beat severely on you. You will be challenged. The rough times will come. And if you have built your life upon the word of God, you will not crash. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You will survive. Remember again, the word of God always goes to God. Everything will fail. The word of God will never fail. So if you build your life on the word of God, with the word of God, you will live eternally with the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, who hears and does what is pleasing to me, the sayings of mine, the Lord just says, he will be a wise man. Are you a wise woman or a wise man? Looking back on the sayings of our Lord Jesus' sermon, it means our commitment to the word of God will be tested to the fullest. You will be tested. Every one of us will be tested. Let's look at some of the words of God that we have to check if we have built our life around it. Let's check a few. Jesus said, enter in at the straight gate. Walk the narrow path. Are you walking the narrow path? You know what it means by walking the narrow path. When everybody is compromising, you don't compromise. You are straight. Because the word of God says you are doing it. You don't follow a multitude to do wrong. The Bible warns us in the book of Numbers, don't follow a multitude to do wrong. The fact that everybody is doing it, doing it is not, doesn't mean it's correct. Choose to stand alone for God. Whatever you would like men to do for you, do that to them. These are some of the things the Lord has asked us to build our life. He said, ask, seek, and knock, and you shall find. Do not be condemning. We should not condemn people. Don't worry about tomorrow. Do we worry? Oh, some of us, we worry so much. We worry so much, we get depressed. We worry so much. How can I find the school fees? How can I find this? How can I find this? How can that? 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 We worry till we get sick. When God said, in all our ways, we shall acknowledge it and trust him with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding but we are working i'm looking at my finances can i make it i'm calculating my finances i'm not trusting god you will sink you will get depression you will get heart problems you will get liver and kidney problems worry will give you unnecessary sickness jesus never worried about anything he doesn't worry about where the next finances is coming from. He controls everything. But when he came, he lived over here. People sponsored his ministry. Jesus, who can tell the disciples, go and fish and you get, bring me a fish. The first fish you caught, I will remove money in them. Who, he, who keeps money in the belly of a fish? Yet, he had a need. When the word of God says that God has treasures in hidden places, we don't even understand it. We don't understand. There are miracles God has done around the world that we haven't heard some of them. What God is capable of doing. Hallelujah. Do not be condemning. Don't do your righteousness act in such a way as to receive them blooded of men be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect some of us they will say no no you are too holy you are trying to live holy than thou 
word of God says that we should be perfect. We should aim to walk just like this. It said, bless those who curse us. Oh, we pray rain and fire upon our enemies. We pray rain of fire. God kill them, kill their grandchildren, kill their great-grandchildren, all kind of people. But Jesus said, we should bless those who even curse us. Love your enemies. We don't love our enemies. We don't even love our friends, let alone our enemies. Even our friends, our friends. We don't love them. We are stopping talking. We have stopped talking to some of our friends because they have said this. We have stopped talking to them. We have deleted their numbers. We have blocked their numbers. When they call, we will never answer. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at look at all this. Jesus said we should even love our enemies. Yet we don't like even our friends. Jesus said, if someone told you, go one mile with me, go two miles with them. Do more than expected. Hallelujah. Amen. So someone slaps you, turn the other cheek. Forgive. Turn the other cheek means forgive. It doesn't mean you should turn the other one and then let them slap as well. Hallelujah. Amen. There are some foolish people over there. If they beat you and you turn the other one, they will beat it even harder. Because they are dumb. Bible says forgive them. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus again said, Be reconciled to your brother with whom you have had some bad time. If your brother offends you, your sister offends you, somebody has offended you. The Bible said we should seek reconciliation. There are people, no amount of reconciliation you can do that will tend them. Their hearts are callous. Our hearts have become so wicked. He said, but let me put with him. You don't know me. Me? When you did something of to you, me, and I write you off, I've written you off. Shame on you. Shame on you. If God writes you off, how would you feel like? You don't have an iota of love. God said we should seek reconciliation. And you don't want to be reconciled. Go ahead. Keep on living like that. Keep on living like that. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to cut this short. We will continue next week in the same way. How are you building your life? What are you building your life upon? Are you building your life upon your job? Is job your security? Are you building your life upon your little business? Your little business has eaten you up. You, 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 you go to sleep thinking about it. You dream about it. You wake up about it. That's all that is on your mind. You barely have time for the word of God. Be careful what you build your life around. Because all these things we see, they will be gone. Look at look at uh, Rachel. Rachel was fighting Leah for just childbirth. He went to he, he went to Jacob. He said, "If you don't give me a child, I will die." There are some people you are so desperate. This year, if I don't I don't get married, I will marry by force. I will find a man. I will get pregnant for somebody so I can have child. You are desperate. You are desperate. Yes, it's, it's going wide, and now you have ended up being a single parent. You still have the child, and you have realized you are how foolish you have been. The only thing you are consoling yourself in. Is that your child? Your only child. You play the fool. You thought you were smart. You thought you could trap a man with pregnancy. He impregnated you. You have a baby. He's left all the responsibility. Now you are crying. Some of us are desperate. So desperate, you pass corner, corner, corner. And then you go and get a little bit of shrine, a little bit of God. You still go to church, all right. But you have a little bit at home under your bed or something you make business with. You have joined a courtic group for money, yet you go to the church and sit down there. Then you are singing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What are you building your life upon? And how are you building your life? Jesus said, the wise man built upon the word of God. He heard the word of God. 
he put it into practice. You are building. Anytime you put the word of God into practice, you are building your life. When all this is over, it is only the word of God that will, will last forever. Rachel, as I was telling you, finally, she got the children. She even stole her father's idol. Chasing after material, competing with the sister. By the time she had Benjamin, the thing she was so desperate, the Bible said, during childbirth, she couldn't make it. And Bible said, when her soul was departing her body, I love that. She has spent all the time chasing material. Her focus was, give me a child or I die. Give me a child or I die. She said, give me a child or I die. And how irony that during the childbirth, she died. And Bible said, when her soul was leaving her body, now, all the material things she has chased, all the bodily things she has chased, now the soul is separating from that body. What has she built her soul up with? Where is her soul going? Someday, somehow, your soul will be separated from your body. How much investment have you done into your soul? Look at how God does your body look like. How much cosmetics? You have paid gym membership, paid gym membership so much. In a year, you pay gym membership more than you give offering and tithe. Building your body. That body, you will be detached with it. Your body looks so good. Your soul is so anemic. Your soul is so kwashioko. Wahani oshi koko. You know what is kwashioko? Your head is big. Your neck is so small. Your belly puff. Your legs are lanky. And your belly and your head are leading you. You are spiritually kwashioko. Somebody said kwashioko. You are malnutrition, spiritual. Your soul is famished. But your body is looking good. Look at those two guys. The one who did quick, quick. I just fixed my car quick. I just built my house quick. And oh, what a celebration when the house was finished building. The other wise guy was still digging and it hasn't even laid a foundation yet. When the other guy has finished and celebrating, cross his leg and enjoying the view. And then the rains hit. But oh, there will be a rainy day in every life. Flood will come. The wind will blow. We will see what you have built your life with. Hallelujah. Amen. What have you built your life with? What are you building your life with? Remember. If you build your life around the word of God, the word of God will take you to where God is. Jesus said, or God said, my word doesn't go and come void. It accomplishes the purpose for which I sent it before it comes to me. Because Jesus came from God and is the word of God, when his life was over on this planet earth, he went back to God where he came from. If we build our lives on the word of God, when this life is over, the word of God will take us to where God is. It's easy. Let's bow our heads in prayer. I don't know what your prayer will be this afternoon. What word of God are you carrying? I have so many word of God I'm carrying. I remember one of the words that God gave me was in Psalm 37 verse 8. He said, I will guide you and teach you and lead you in the way you should go so that you will not be like a meal that has to be controlled. You will not be like a meal. When God gave me that word, I had it so close to my heart. I wrote it in my church notebook in front of it at the first opening. And the funniest thing is, 
the day I was water baptized, that same scripture was quoted to me. I heard that dear until God spoke to me again from Deuteronomy. He said, let my word go like shower upon a tender plant, like rain. First of all, he said, like dew, like shower, and like rain. And God said, learn my words and begin to teach children, teach youth, and teach adults. Let my words go. And that's exactly what happened. I, the Lord started me from children's service to youth ministry and now I'm a pastor I held on to that word for so long until another word came take heed to the ministry that you have received from the Lord now I'm saying this because if you're a child of God by this time I don't know how long you have been in the Lord you should have a solid word of the, from the Lord that you heard him speaking to you from the scriptures that you build your life upon what are you building your life upon? Many of you, yes, you know Bible passages. But none of them has been something the Lord directly spoke to you. Upon which you should build your life in ministry. To the day you depart. At least the three key words the Lord gave me. I've seen him fulfill them in my life. Is still happening. What are you building your life upon? Are you building your life upon your business, your job? The word, it was the word of God that took me from Africa and planted me to this country. So I will do what the word of God says. What brought you to where you are in the diaspora? Is it a greener pasture? So you are working so hard to build that dream house in Africa. Save enough money in the bank over there. You don't even know what will become of it. Some of you, you have children in the diaspora. And instead of investing in the diaspora for your children, you are investing back home. So that one day, maybe those children you have in the diaspora, they never go back and live over there. And all the investment you have done over there, what whose would it be? There are people who have made such terrible mistakes. And now, some of them have even died in the diaspora. The houses or the building, the investment they did in Africa is there. The children are living over here. Forgotten about it. They won't even go and chase it. They won't go and look for it. We need wisdom. We need our understanding. Don't live your life for material gain. Don't live your life for material. Yesterday, as I was at the riverside praying, God was telling me, you have invested your life so much into other people, children, adults, both in Africa and here. And that is not enough. Keep on pouring your life into people. Pour your life into people. Are you pouring your life into somebody? Who are you pouring your life into? Who? Do you know any Christian sister, Christian brother, Christian boy, Christian girl? You are pouring your spiritual life into. That those people can live one day and say, if it wasn't for this person, I wouldn't have been this strong in the Lord. Who are you pouring your life into? What are you living for? only and we should be doers that's what the word of God says today we should not just hear many of you you have been trapped you thought you were smart you ignore the word of God and you took things into your hands and you begin to live according to your will and now you are trapped trapped in a situation you wish you can come out. You are fighting so hard. You are you have now started searching the word of God. You are looking frantically in the Bible to see if there will be any excuse somewhere in the Bible for you to get out of that trap. No. Live in there by the grace of God. The word of God says that 
if you marry, if you were a believer, marry an unbeliever, and the unbeliever is not willing to leave you, don't leave. Don't find excuses to leave. If the unbeliever still want to live with you, you know, you knew he was not a believer. You knew he came to the church to look for a wife, but because you are desperate, you didn't check your spirit. You didn't check the word of God. You compromise. no way out. You are ready in it. But the grace of God is sufficient. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what God told Paul. He said, these tongues will be in your flesh. We don't know what the tongues will be. He said, these tongues will be in your flesh. We will continue to break you. And my grace will be sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Pray, pray. What are you building on that? Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for such a word, for such a time of word. Help us, O oh Lord, to be able to invest our life. To be able to invest our life. This life, this one life, this one life you have given me, Lord. This one life you have given me. I don't know how long I have left. I don't know, but Lord, I thank you. I thank you for putting all those thoughts in my spirit. And you cause my heart to flow in your direction. And by your word, you took me from the shores of Africa. You planted me over here to do that which you put in my spirit. To speak to other people about you. And that I will do. But Father, even as I'm doing that, cause me to continue to build my life on your word. So that when all is said and done, these words of yours will rapture me to come and stay with you and not to go down. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, stay in there. Keep praying with us as I call my brother and that to come and pray for you, our listeners. Hallelujah. Find something to build your life around. Build your life. Hallelujah. Build your life. Father, we thank you so much this afternoon. Build your life. We thank you for the word that has come forth. The word is full of encouragement. The word is full of caution. We thank you, Jehovah God. Bring us light and gives understanding to the sin. We thank you, Jehovah God, that word that has come from that we should build our life on the word of God. Father, I pray for our listeners, O God, that Jehovah God will not build our life on the sun. That when the storms of this life and the rains of this life and the tragedies of this life will will not depart from God, but will build our life on the solid rock, the word of God, that will help us to go to have fellowship with you every day. Father, this afternoon, we want to thank you, Jehovah God, for your word. And we pray for all our listeners. We are asking Jehovah God that we will study your word to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing your word. For I will pray, Jehovah God, the Bible says your word is a spirit and is a life. For I will pray that God that will seek what is life, will seek what is spirit and not material things. For I will pray, Jehovah God, that you will encourage our listeners to God. Now, the word that they have listened this afternoon, Jehovah God, they will ponder over it. For Jesus Christ as his disciples. So can't you wait for me for just an, an, an hour? Father, we bring Jehovah God, our listeners to God, who have the spirit of waiting upon you, the spirit of studying your word. Father, we thank you, bless you, Jehovah God. This afternoon, your word has come forth for God. We are praying that God will build our life on your word. 
which is sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, we thank you, we bless you. We thank you so much, Jehovah God, for all those who have tuned in and those who follow us, O God, on the social media. We are asking Jehovah God that none of us, O God, will depart from this word. None of us, O God, will fall away from your word, but will always continue to study and listen to your word and be obedient to your word. So when we obey your word, O God, will be like a tree planted by rivers of living waters who bear their fruit in our season. Father, we are praying over God that will bear our fruits to God in our season. We thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You are I remember every song we have taught us from Sunday school. Because they are messages to me. They were not just songs. Remember one of the songs we sing, how my, my home in heaven, how beautiful. My home in heaven, how beautiful. And Jesus has made it clear to us that whatever heaven already has for us, 
we can improve it by what we do on this earth. Don't you get it? Father, in the name of your son Jesus, I commit my listener into your hands. Some of them were on fire when they were back home before they travel overseas. As soon as they travel overseas, they are still Christians all right. They still go to church, but they have lost all the vibrance and the fire they once were when they were back home because they have reached their promised land. Be safe. A place on this earth has become their promised land. They're still mindful of heaven. Their promised land is where they are now. So all the shouting, the screaming, the fire and everything back home has come to a stop. Because we are building in a foreign country. We've forgotten that this earth is not having our destination. I pray this afternoon for you. That you will turn on a new leaf. You will, you will start thinking deep about your relationship with heaven where you want to go. To begin to obey the word of God. I pray that you will not be arrogant. You will not be stubborn. You will not puff up. You will not defend your luck last time. That you wake up with the hard truth that this young man over there is telling me the truth. Having been told for ages. I will not promote your endeavor to enrich yourself on this earth. But I will not tell you off not to do it. If you can balance it with the things of God and it will not take you away from the things of God. But it will be an advantage for you to add more to your value in the things of God. I will promote it. If not, I will tell you, seek your spiritual warfare first. Hallelujah. Be mindful about that. Because someday, all this will be over. And it is only the things of God that you have invested into your life and invested into the kingdom of God that will remain. The amount of money you have in the bank, maybe you don't even spend a certain amount in a day. But I tell you, whoever will inherit you may blow it within no time. They will buy this, you shy away from it. Is that not what Solomon said? And is that not what his children need? Balance the equation. Father, I thank you for my listeners. I pray that you have spoken. We will hear and we will put it into practice. So that our life beyond this life will be far richer than what we are worth over here. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's do the Lord of God. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to you. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We ascribe to you the majesty. What a name. What a truth. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May these words continue to ring in your soul and your spirit. And may you invest your life appropriately. May you invest 
you are alive on this earth appropriately. And as you invest your daily life, be mindful of your destiny in heaven and build your life, a better life in heaven. The Lord keep you from danger, keep you from infectious diseases and all kinds of temptation. Preserve your soul and your spirit. May the Lord always hear you, in trouble defend you, send help from his sanctuary, and may he answer all your petitions. The Lord bless you. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you.